Folks, I don't know a lot about Super Smash Brothers, but one thing I know that is an undeniable fact is that Smash players love tier lists. And that's saying something because fighting game players love tier lists too, but I feel like Smash, they take it to another level. And I have tracked down one of the most prolific creators of tier lists on the internet. It's Kony. I've been a big fan of Kony's channel for a long time. He puts out Smash content, general gaming content, and just funny stuff. I'll link his YouTube down in the description. Make sure you guys subscribe to him there. And I dragged Kony into my video to try to get him to make a tier list about a game he knows nothing about and see if the tier list making skills for one game can carry over into other games as well. So we're taking a look at Ultra Street Fighter 4. I'm gonna throw him into the deep end. I went through some characters with him. I showed him their pros, their cons, some of the stuff they can do. And he had to put his analytical mind to the test and place the characters on a tier list and then get graded on how accurate he is. So one thing to keep in mind is I had to edit this down a lot to make it a reasonable YouTube video size. So if you're thinking about commenting like, bro, you didn't even talk about this or that or this thing that a character can do. I probably did talk about it. It just got edited out. So if you want to see the full VOD, I'll also link that down below. It's like 90 minutes long. You can hear all the nitty gritty detail that we went through to try to explain these characters. But yeah, thanks again to Kony for being a good sport and doing this exercise with me. And thank you to you guys for watching. Let me know if you'd like to see something like this in the future, maybe with a different game. I would love to hear whatever ideas you have. But with that, let's jump right into it and uh, see how Kony does on the Ultra Street Fighter 4 tier list quiz here. <laughs> so we've got, we've got five tiers here. Okay. Top, high, yeah. middle, low, and bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through a handful of characters. Obviously, we can't do the whole cast, but a handful. Sure, sure, sure. We'll do their special moves. We'll do some of their pros and cons. And then you can use your sort of uh, your prognostication abilities, your character analysis abilities, oh, God. and see if you can figure out how good you think a character is. But to, to give you a reference point, I'm going to go ahead and, and rank two characters immediately for you. We're going to sure. do the best yeah, character in the idea. game and the worst character in the game. Okay. So best character in the game is Evil Ryu, and the worst character in the game is Dan. So I'll, okay. I'll go ahead. Okay. I'll, I'll pick those guys, and we can. I'll, I'll show you a couple things that make these guys good and bad. I thought he was like okay in some games to the point where like he's not a so bad. Is that not the case? Well, he he is okay in this game. He can win. Um, but he does have a lot of, like, disadvantages compared to most of the cast. I think Street Fighter 4 as a series is really balanced. Like, most characters can definitely compete. Dan has a couple good moves, like his Dan kick, his knee. These are good moves, and he can DP FADC, but in general, he just has a lot of problems. His normals are really bad. His uh, conversions are really bad. It's hard for him to get damage off of a lot of attacks. So yeah, Dan's the worst. But okay, so Evil Ryu, he has essentially everything in the game. So he has fast walk speed. He's a lot faster than regular Ryu. Fast dash speed. Uh, and he has incredibly good pokes. So you can see he like he like lunges forward when he does crouching medium kick. Uh, so he's a footsies monster. He has potentially the best footsies in the game. Plus, he has a multi-hit fireball that doesn't cost meter, so he wins fireball wars. And also, he has the highest damage combos in the game. So let me see if I can do at least one good combo for the boys. Oh, this all links. Yeah, so I, I dropped it in together. there somewhere, but <laughs> yeah, he can, he can do great. like... 40% for no meter, so his combos are really insane as well. I know everybody's complaining about Elena, right? Elena's like the... I've heard stuff about her, but I don't know anything like how she functions or why. So I don't know why that is. But well, maybe we should just... Let, let's just start out with Elena. Then. We'll, oh, we'll, God. Okay. Uh, she has a DP, and EX version is invincible. Unlike Evil Ryu, she has to spend meter to make it invincible, so... Uh, she has Link's Tail, which is a low, and depending on the strength, she'll do like more and more like spins. Uh, she has Mallet Smash, so uh, this is an overhead. So yeah, she can Link after Mallet Smash. There. So she yeah. can Link into a knockdown like that okay. off of an overhead, which yeah, that's pretty strong, pretty rare. Dudley can do that too. Uh, and maybe one or two others, but generally most characters don't actually get like a real combo off overhead. And then her other move that I wanted to talk about is her ultra. So the ultra that everyone uses is healing. 
It actually heals her HP. She can do it fast or slow. So it, like slow, like with a longer animation is generally so unsafe that you'll never do it. But the fast version, she gets like- Jesus! No, that that's training mode. That's oh, training okay, mode. that's training mode. Okay, okay. I was like, oh my God, Jesus Christ. She gets like 10% maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, that, that doesn't seem great, 10%. We've covered the character. Do you have any questions before we move on to the the rating segment? No, I think I, I think I've got a good sense of it. She she's mad gangly, dude. She's just she is all, gangly. She's yeah. just gangly. She seems more safe than anything, I would say. But she does have tools when she's like the best characters in in most games are the ones that like are good at that range, but also when they get in, like, they could get back out or just stuff you on the ground. I think, uh -huh. I'm feeling, I don't think it's a top, but I'll say it's a high, because I feel like that healing isn't as good as, like, I think any kind of healing always sounds like it's going to be crazy, but I don't, I don't think it practices that crazy. I got high. I got high on this. Okay, well, I'll, I'll let high. you know, she is a good character. Uh, yeah. She's top tier, actually. Uh, Elena is probably the second best character in the game. Some people say she's the best. Some people okay. say she's top three or four. Uh, she's actually insanely cracked. So it's interesting when Ultra first came out, people didn't really think she was that good. I think the okay. highest placing she got at EVO 2014, which was the first version that had her, she got like 50th or something. She didn't She didn't even crack like top 16. Uh, like, a, like a slow grower. Okay. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. a grower, not a shower. And then sure. in 2015, uh, the top three of Evo, they didn't play Elena the whole time, but they all played her for like at least some matchups. So all of the top three were picking and learning Elena the second year that it was at Evo. Is she one of those characters that's like mad, not, not easy, but like a good pocket, like anybody She can is, yeah. And gotcha, okay. the, the thing about Elena, the way a lot of people describe her is against maybe like a dozen characters in the game, she goes like pretty even. So she goes even okay. against Evo Ryu. She goes even against Akuma. She goes even against a lot of characters that you see a lot, but the rest of the cast, she just destroys. So just so, good matchups. Okay. Yeah, a, a, a huge portion of the cast, she just kind of invalidates. So one of the reasons is this sweep is so stupid. You can't zone her. The only character whose fireball she can't go under is Chun-Li. I love that you said that Ultra doesn't seem that good because actually her healing Ultra is an extremely broken Ultra. And there's a few reasons why. So because HP is the ammunition that gives you ultra because you build ultra by taking damage, right? HP is the ammunition that gives you ultra meter and her ultra gives her more HP. So she is the only character that she's almost guaranteed to get two ultras per round, but she can get three or even four. So she gets way more ultras than every other character. She ends up, even though she doesn't actually have high health, she ends up being the highest health character in the game because she's pretty much guaranteed to get two healings off. So, so just the classic top tier that makes you play their game. I feel that. Yeah, she it. completely yeah. dominates neutral. And, you know, the fact that she has good mix-up, she has good confirms, good damage. All right, so that, that's that's pretty much all for Elena. That's all I have okay. to say. So you, you did pretty well. I think you identified she seems strong. But, yeah, a, a lot of people didn't identify when the game came out that she was going to be top tier. It took, I mean, it took at least either. like a year for people to figure it out. And some people actually say she killed the game because uh, 20, <laughs> 2015 was the last wow. game. This was at EVO because SF5 came out in 2016. But people really, I feel like, lost interest after Grand Finals, which was Elena versus Chun. And it was like the most boring match ever where she just sure. absorbed fireballs and, and did healing. So, uh, yeah, that was tough. I, I feel like that kind of character archetype lives in a lot of different games where it's like a gatekeeper that shuts out the bottom half and then does really good against top half yeah. and then you have to do what she wants what that character wants you to do that's in every game yeah absolutely while we're on the topic of chun li why don't we just talk about chun li oh i i don't i think she's like normally pretty good right i don't think chun li's ever been bad right um, Dang. I don't want to give any information, but okay. you did mention that I think you know that Chun is top tier in Street Fighter 3, Third Strike. I do strike. know that. Her and either Yun or Yang. I can't remember. I think Yun, right? Yeah, Yun in that Yun one, yeah. One. yeah. So Chun is top tier in that game, and she actually does have like a lot of the same things in this game. So pros, okay. just like in every game, she has some of the longest reaching and best normals in the game. So she can hit you from Jesus, way she further. Stretches. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. 
she has crazy range um she has good block strings and good hit confirms so like i mentioned lightning legs is a really easy combo ender that is a knockdown so she can pressure afterwards and she can combo into super a lot as well chun li low-key has like one of the best supers in the game so she can like do lightning legs combos into super there we go flip kick combos into super which is an overhead and it goes over fireballs so she can go into super a lot of ways as well uh, so those are her pros. Cons, so this is a big one, is that she's weak to focus attack. So so focus attack will just eat her pokes, and then she gets crumpled into a combo. Gotcha. So that's a downside oh, that's for her. Bad. That yeah. seems really bad, I would think. Yeah. Okay. She has a couple ways to break it. We can do that, which is a pretty hard input, but she can do it like that. She can just ultra it. So she has a couple answers, but yeah, focus is hard for her to deal with. Okay, all right. I, I think I've got it. I'm feeling a hard mid on this one. I'm getting a sense she was strong in the base game. Seem really strong because the pokes and shit, people are like, oh wait, you could just focus everything she does. Seems harder to play and probably got outperformed as new DLC showed up. I'm thinking, I'm feeling a middle on this. I think she went down. All right, you know, I'll give you credit. I think you pretty much hit the nail on the head in every really? aspect here. Yeah, so. Ooh! Ooh, okay. Chun, right. she is a mid tier in Ultra. Okay. There was only one version of the game where she was pretty top tier. That was the second version, Super Street Fighter 4. So, for sure, lack of a good focus breaker is really brutal. Uh, and yeah, part of the reason why she's not amazing in this is going to be like the meta. So, uh, yeah. in the versions where she's good, I'm not going to tell you who's good in this one, but in the versions that she's good, the best <laughs> characters are like Sagat was one of the best characters in the first version, Ryu was one of the best characters, and Chun did pretty well against these guys. So she has a hard time against the really oppressive offensive characters, and uh, in games like this where a lot of those are really good, uh, she does struggle a bit. But she does go 5-5 five, five against Elena, so that does help. But yeah, she's a like solid being able Being able to jump in on her and she has to do the right thing at the time, like that seems really yeah. frustrating. Hey, we've done okay. we've done two normal of characters so far. We gotta go to my boy, if I can even find him. Here he is, El Fuerte. Oh, no, okay. I do know this guy sucked at the start because I played Street Fighter Four the first one. And okay. he was like, I th if I'm not mistaken, he was really bad but annoying. <laughs> All right, so he's got the command run. This is like his most important move. So <laughs> he's really, really mobile because he can- uh, Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> he runs like Gumby. Oh my yeah. God. Oh yeah, he can, he can run really fast and then stop running whenever he wants. So this okay. is honestly pretty good just for movement, but the real reason you use it is for the follow-ups. So um, Tostada press hits overhead, must be blocked high, and you can hit on the front or the back. They kind of have to guess. Tortilla throw is unblockable, has to be jumped. It is pretty damn hard to block this character. He is one of the harder characters in the game to block. He also, uh, he can wall jump. This is pretty good with Fuerte as well. He has the longest wall jump, so he can go from full screen to That's hitting you. Far. Yeah, so he's like the only character that can really do this, maybe like him and Seth. And also, he is one of the only characters with an infinite. It's not really practical. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, but he does have an infinite. Uh, but as for his cons, he is stubby, similar to Dan. His normals don't reach far. I got this uh, guy locked in, though. I got this right. one. All right. Uh, trash version one, and they mm -hmm. tried to help him out a little bit. Gave him some buffs, tried to help him out. I'm feeling a little low on this one. He's probably, like, really annoying for casuals. But in real play, you just... It, he's probably easy to shut down. That's okay. my... Uh, he, he's annoying to everyone, I'll tell you that. He's not oh, just no. annoying. He's annoying to fight all the time. But, okay. uh, I mean, you're on the right track that he did start out not that good. I would say he was low in okay. original Street Fighter 4. But, uh, you know, as accurate as you are with Sean, you're slightly off the mark. I think he's actually high tier. He's, oh, he's maybe good? He's borderline mid-high. He's on the oh. higher end of mid, the lower end of high. He's, pretty, he's probably okay. not top 10 but he's not that far from it. Fuerte is actually pretty cracked in Ultra Street Fighter 4. I, I saw that Tortilla Bomb and like the, the, the guessing, you know what I mean? When it yeah. comes to like when he's running, I'm like, okay, that seems like something that 
appears to be good, but when they actually get into the game, like there's probably something that a player can abuse. Yeah, that, to a, to a degree, like just having a one note playstyle with the character is definitely not good enough. But there were some people who were able to make this character look really good at the highest levels of play, and okay. there's a few reasons. So. Uh, first of all, he doesn't really care about getting zoned out, right? You can't keep this character away with fireballs. So for characters like Sagat, who his entire plan is to throw fireballs at you, or like sure. Dalsim, uh, Fuerte really counteracts that because he he just gets in. Like then whether he hits he, run is killing me. I know, and this has <laughs> armor too, so this this goes through multiple hits. So Multiple they can't. Hits. Yeah, yeah, I think up to oh, up to three Jesus. hits. Okay. So ex run is good, and you know he just instantly gets in like that. Like That's if they crazy. if they throw a fireball, he just does this and he's in. So you can't zone him out. So that's a problem. And if he has the life lead, how do you catch him? He just he just runs oh, away, and then yeah. you chase him into the corner. You know, you, you chase Fuerte into the corner. You're like, all right, I finally got him, and then he's like, nope, I'm out. Now I have oh, a whole other screen Sonic. to work with. Oh, yeah. dude, we have this in our game. His name is Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, this was just screaming goofy gimmick mid to me. Yeah. Like, I, 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 it's something about him. I can't believe he's good. That's, oh, yeah. I, I, that's crazy. Fuerte that, is that a menace. Sense. The run, the run, that seems obnoxious. Well, let's just go to the other Mexican character, which is Tiha. Oh, I have no fucking idea with this guy. <laughs> I don't know uh, anything excellent. about him. I've never seen him play, so. So, T-Hawk is a grappler. So, yeah, I know he's got that goofy-ass throw. He has command throw. That's the one. The, yeah. The one where he spins. Okay. Also, he is the only grappler in the game with a dragon punch. He's the only one. Obviously, just having a command throw is strong. Also, if you look, off his light command throw, he's left close to you. So, most grapplers, ah, usually if they yeah. land a throw, they're sent full screen. What's interesting about having a DP and a throw, right, is that the opponent is guessing, you know, they're, if they expect that I'm going to command throw, they will either, like, try to hit me out of it or they'll try to jump, right? Right. And Dragon Punch beats both of those options because it's invincible and because it'll catch them out of the air. But if they think I'm going to Dragon Punch, they want to block it because Dragon Punch is the big downside is that they're unsafe on block. But if they're blocking, I can throw you. So it's kind of scary in general to be close to T-Hawk because he'll either DP you or he'll throw you. And if DP lands, uh, he's also left close to you. So you, you don't want to get hit by DP either. Uh, but he does have one big downside, which is his hit confirm. So we've talked a lot about hit confirms. Yeah, so you can see like it's not actually possible for me to combo into any of, any of his specials from this situation, that, even that with EX. As soon as you said grappler, uh, my mind went to a certain place because, like, I, 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 I tend to play grapplers in most of the games I play, uh, and they're usually pretty bad. Um, mm -hmm. I remember being very surprised that Geef was actually pretty good, and uh, I, I watched Snake Eyes. I was like, "Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, how is he winning? Nobody ever does that." I, I think, I think grapplers are usually pretty bad in general. And he seems extremely slow. I feel like I'm gonna put him at. I think he's at low, if okay. not bottom. Ooh. I'm You're... feeling. I'm feeling low. I'm feeling low on this one. You know, he arguably could be bottom. I think. I don't know. It might be haterade to but say he that is he's low. bottom. He, he is, is low. low. You, you, you're Absolutely. pretty much right. Let's go. Okay. Uh, and of course, aesthetically, it makes sense that Low is the only one that we haven't we haven't had a character for yet. So of course, um, I'll go ahead and spoil that Zangief's high tier. Zangief is sure, quite yeah. good. The by far the reason why Zangief is better than T Hawk is because Zangief can hit confirm. And then look how close ah, he is, right? Right. Dude, so he's right on you, Jesus. It sucks That's to get scary. hit by this against Geef. <laughs> it does cost one bar, but yeah, like. That's nothing. Man. I mean, like, oh, dude. And then you try to jump out, right? You're like, he's close to me, and then he just does it to you again. Pokes like again, right? So, yeah, that's Jeez. why Zangief is good and T-Hawk is bad, is essentially just the hit confirming issue. So yeah. if I can actually find the guy that I'm looking for, he's right here. We're looking at DJ. Oh, I love DJ. Okay. So DJ is going to be our, well, this is what, the second charge character that we've seen? Chun-Li was the only other one. So similar to Chun-Li, charge fireball. And he's got this charge up kicks. And this is a really, really good anti-air. So if they are 
Uh, you know, he has a very standard play style of you throw fireballs, and then when they expect fireball, they jump, then you anti-air them with up kicks. Uh, and then his other strength is kind of interesting. It's it's his vortex capability. Have you heard the word vortex as it relates to yeah, fighting yeah, yeah. games? Yeah, we we have the our, in our game. It's Fox. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, it, it might be different because Fox does he like knock you down and then mix you up? I guess no, he like Fox tech chases and stuff. Fox is like tech chasing in 50-50s. and if you I guess see. wrong, you're taking like seventy. So, but if yours is knockdown, no, that's different. Yeah, usually in Street Fighter, at least when we say vortex, we mean a knockdown into a mix up that leads back into the same knockdown. So ah, okay. you're you're guessing, and if you guess wrong, you're gonna have to make the same guess again. And usually the the options have to be like pretty perfectly 50-50. Like there's no trick that Ryu can really use to like block both correctly, like an option select or anything. The mix up is he's either gonna do like this and hit you cross up, okay. or he's going to do like this and hit you on the front. So he has this interesting bazooka ah, Nimu that yeah. alters his air trajectory. That's weird. Yeah, so if he jumps from like this range, you think he's gonna cross you up, but he can actually hit you on the front too. No weird care. Okay. Problem is, you know, he's a charge character and he relies on charge more than most other charge characters, so Chun-Li has lightning legs, which, you know, you mash kick so you don't have to have charge, so she can always use that for a combo ender. But all of DJ's combo enders require charge, so... So uh, he's locked into this play style. Yeah, this, this move requires charge, this move requires charge, this move requires charge, this move requires charge. So there's a few situations where that's really bad. So, so if this happens, right, mm -hmm. Ryu is kind of far away. But he's in a punishable position, right? He's landing from a Dragon Punch. Sure. Most characters will get a punish here. DJ can't do much. He can sweep. Uh, he can, like, dash up and do something like this. In order to get a special, you would have to dash up to be close. And then you could, like, do this. But then when you dash, you lose your charge. So in right, situations where that. he has to dash to punish, he can't really get anything except like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting shitty Guile vibes. Like, uh, like a, like I said at the beginning, kind of like a Shoto thing, because like he's, he's kind of basic in his, like the kit seems kind of basic and, and no neutral, but then it's also a lot of Guile in there too, and I feel like he's just the shittiest part of both worlds. Uh, the fact that you can't confirm into super anything because you have to lose your charge seems very bad. Mm hmm I'm feeling a bottom on this one dude I, I i don't think he's very yeah i'm just gonna go with my instincts like am i right i uh, you know it, it's i think it's got to be something in like my tone of voice or the way i talk that i'm i'm giving too many signals because are yes, you he giving is, it away <laughs> he is bottom tier he is some people say some people say he's worse than dan it's close oh that's sad oh, but no. it, honestly the only real reason why he's bottom tier is just damage he just can't do any oh, damage really? without charge yeah okay. he just needs charge to do any damage and he can't combo into ultra so that hurts his damage a lot too uh that's really just the whole reason why he's bad um so yeah he is bottom tier but i i, I will let you in on an interesting factoid since you're talking about you know him being worse guile uh sure. he is worse than guile in this game guile's probably mid ish but in the the first game that DJ premiered in, uh, well, in, in Super Street Fighter two, 2 Turbo, which is the version of Street Fighter 2 that's played in tournament, DJ is actually way better than Guile and potentially top tier. And Gu <laughs> Guile is just like decent in Super Turbo. But anyway, that's about all I got for you. So how about we, we'll, we'll do like a report card, like how, how sure. accurate you were. So I, I feel like... Um, Not bad. Not bad, bro. Not the only terrible. one that was hard, I think, was Fuerte. I think everyone else... Uh, like Elena was a little low yeah, and Fuerte yeah, yeah. was way low, but other than that, you know, I give you maybe like a B I think your your character estimation skills are pretty on point here. I, I feel like it's honestly I don't Play fighting games regularly, but I will like observe them enough and I feel like there's so many There's a lot of stuff that transfers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like whether it's like th they're, they're gatekeeper characters in every game I had a uh, Fuerte pegged is like that with that weird execution test like knowledge check mid tier yeah. although he's a little bit better than that there's always like a top tier that gets phased out over time i don't know i feel like if you if you show somebody enough games you can kind of start to feel out people you know what i mean 
Well, let, let me tell you that if I ever had to do this for Smash, I would be hopeless. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Is so weird, dude. I like, don't know anything about. I know like melee balance, but I don't know anything about Smash Ultimate. So I would simply, I would simply uh, get them all wrong.